Hi, welcome to Solomon Says, a division of Hebrew Wizards. I'm here to teach you everything that you need to know about being Jewish so that you too can become a wizard. Hi, I made this board just for you. Maimonides or Rambam's Eight Levels of Tzedakah. So Tzedakah comes from the root word Tzedek, which means righteous. And it's said that when you act righteously, you do what is expected and asked by God. When you do a mitzvah, it is really a commandment and it's not really optional. We get that confused sometimes. We think that doing a mitzvah is something that we have an option of doing, but really we have an obligation or a responsibility to take care of each other. So this has a little bit to do with Kalal Yisrael too, because if we don't take care of each other, then we won't know that we need to be responsible for each other and to make sure that everyone has enough food, has enough clothing, and we can actually make them self-sufficient to be able to help themselves. So there's eight levels of tzedakah, with the eighth being the highest, not the other way around. So the first one, and I would love to see if you can really do this by really thinking about the pictures to be able to remember the different levels. One who gives unhappily. If you're going to give, you need to give joyfully and graciously and not unhappily and as if you were put out. Wearing a big smile and giving and donating gifts to people and to those in need is really something that's special doing it with cheerfulness. Number two, you do it cheerfully, but you, you can give more. If somebody needs $40 and you smile and give them 20 knowing they need 40, then you're obligated to give what you can and not to be stingy in your giving. So it would be nice if you gave cheerfully and it gave as much as you could, still having plenty for yourself, but still taking care of somebody who actually needs something desperately. The third one is one who gives a sufficient amount, but only when asked to give to the needy. It's so nice when somebody gives without being asked. Somebody knows exactly what you might need and just hands over and says, hi, I saw that you need some clothes and I have some clothes for you. Without somebody says, do you have some clothes for me? Because I have none. So that's really something important. Think about what somebody might need before they need it or ask for it. One who gives, number four, one who gives before being asked and directly to those people in need. So those that um, are offering to the needy, they know exactly the people that they're gonna give it to, whether it's a um, goodwill or a Jewish fund of some sort. You know exactly where you're going and you're going to give it because you are able to give it and you want to give it right now. So number five, one who gives so that the needy knows the source, but the giver does not know who or he or she is giving to. There are a lot of times that you're giving to different foundations and the foundations will then give to the needy. But sometimes the person that, real, that gave the money will not know exactly where it's going. But maybe the person who received it knows that it was given by that person. So it can happen that way too. But number five is to think about giving it to the foundation and the foundation gives it directly to those in need. Number six, 
One who gives so that the giver knows the identity of the recipient, but the recipient does not know the giver. So that means that if I gave to somebody that I know was going to have it, they, they might not know it came from me, so they wouldn't be embarrassed. Because in Judaism, if you embarrass somebody, you are really, that is one of the highest, most dishonorable things you can do. You should never embarrass anyone in, this, in the name of Judaism. So in order to do the laws of Judaism, you have to be a good person first. And then following the Jewish laws comes second to being a good person. Seven, one who gives so that the giver knows not the identity of the recipient, nor does the recipient know the identity of the giver. So you might give to a foundation anonymously. You're giving money, but you don't know who is it going to, and the person doesn't know it came from you. But you have given, and you, you give because you can give and it doesn't matter who you're giving to, and it doesn't matter to you that you get recognized for it. So giving anonymously is a very, very nice thing because you're not saying, I gave and I want recognition for it. That's not to say that if you did give and your name gets on, put on a plaque, that there's anything wrong with that either. It's just in the levels of Mamanity, Mamanity feels that you should give unselfishly. And unselfishly means you get nothing in return by giving, but just the inner satisfaction of giving. Number eight, one who helps the needy by not offering a gift or a loan, but provides a partnership or work so that that person can support him or herself. Well, you've heard of the wonderful saying, give a man a fish, and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for life. And the reason that is, is because you want to teach somebody to take care of themselves. Once you are able to take care of yourself, then that person can be standing on his own and be self-sufficient. And that's the highest thing that you can do. So don't always hand out money to people. Maybe they can use a job and can take care of themselves or help themselves. Helping somebody help themselves is the nicest, most honorable thing you can do in Judaism. Here is what the wise wizard says. We all try to be holy and respectful to God. And if we take care of our family, friends, neighbors, and the world around us, then we are doing what God commands us to do. So I hope this was helpful and learning about Maimonides or Rambam, eight levels of tzedakah, doing great things by helping other people. Remember, helping other people help themselves is the greatest honor of all. See you next time on Solomon Says. Cause I wanna be a wizard.